Okay, so it's been a while since I recorded something. So I'm just going to tell you guys. So I just jotted down a whole bunch of stuff tonight because um, there is a lot that goes into um, having like 90 days of power and then continuing on um, for the next 90 days. So like from January to June. You will hear us talk a lot about this is where the magic happens. There's just miracles that happen this time of year. But not only do you have to do the work, but you got to get your mind in the right spot. And so um, I'm going to give you, I'm just going to say a lot of things that maybe help, help you to start thinking a different thought. I'm also going to kind of tell you like a formula of what it takes. And this business is so stinking simple but we do complicate it and we get in our own way. And um, it's that bad neighborhood that's up here that we have to fix. And so I'm just going to read just really quickly something from one of my notes. So I keep these notebooks for every training that I've ever been, every book I've ever read. I have probably, oh my gosh, probably a hundred of these notebooks filled with my notes. And so I go back every so often and I just kind of read over them and I circled some things that I wanted to share with you tonight. Oh good, I marked my page. So there is a quality that you have to possess to be able to win. And that quality is the knowledge of, of knowing what you want and possessing the desire to have it. Okay. And so I bet like if I, went through and and just really did a, a coaching with every one of you and I ask you what you want you probably wouldn't be able to tell me and the reason is is because you really haven't dug into this business to know what is available for you because I know for a fact because I did it myself, because I dug in. I wanted to know everything about this business. That's just my personality. When I do something, I do it 110%. And I did not like not knowing everything. And I remember always thinking, I can't wait till I've been in this business for one year. I will know everything. I, I just kept telling myself that. I don't know how or what the year anniversary was, but I knew I would have more knowledge. And knowledge, with knowledge comes confidence. And so because I dug in and I looked through the career path, I saw what was available, what all the contests were, then I knew what I want, what I wanted and I had a burning desire to get it. And so I'm going to challenge you guys tonight that find out what it is that you want because it, it can be yours. And we've said this year after year after year, it's six months when you make up your mind and you have that burning desire and you, you know what you want. It's, and you've made it up the mind, you're made up your mind and your, and your mind and your heart. It's yours. All you have to do is go do the work. And so the knowledge that you, that you possess, what you, you know what you want and you have a burning desire to get it is the first formula of winning. Okay. The other thing is we talked about, um, I told you I wanted to talk about course correction. I've talked about this on a Voxer uh, a couple weeks ago. Course correction has been used for in everything, coaching, sports, um, leadership, everything, every in, in, inventors, everybody course corrects. And, but with us, for some reason, we have this July 1 to June 30th. You know, we track ourselves and we know how much we have to do each month to stay on track. But for some reason, by the time December gets here, we look at the average and we're, we're off track and we give up and we coast through to the end of the seminar year and we're waiting for that July 1 date so that we can start all over and then fall short again half the year and then coast through and we keep doing the same thing over and over this like banging your head against the wall if you learn the skill of course correcting and I'll give you I'll give you an example the Apollo rocket when it was going to the moon 
was off course. It had, it was, it had, it traveled a quarter of a million miles to the moon. For every, let's see, for every half hour, the ship was in, you know, in orbit going toward the moon uh, or in flight, let's say that. It was only on course every minute. Um, but it reached the moon anyway because it was course correcting. You look at NASCAR drivers. They, they don't just work on their car all year long, I mean, all week long, put it out there on Sunday and let it go around in circles. They are constantly tweaking that car through the whole 200 laps. Same thing with football. I use this scenario. You know, you last couple of years when Georgia had to play Alabama, we were leading at halftime, but we went back to, into halftime and Alabama went back and made some adjustments, they course corrected and came back and beat us. Course correction is inventors, um, the airplane, the Wright brothers, course correction. And so if you are off, let's say you go through and you look at quarter sharing, quarter sales, you look at being on target for your car, okay? And you look at what you have to do from January to June and what you're off course, you just course correct. Let's say your January doesn't start off like you want. Well, you course correct in February and you finish out February through June. It's a skill that, I, that you have to learn if you're gonna be a leader and, you're going to, and that you're gonna be successful in business. And you, you know, you've gotta stop you know, when you fall down, staying down, okay? You've gotta bounce back up. So I wanna to talk to you about the, um, you know, to have this 90 days of power, okay? 10 classes will change your business. 10 parties on your date book, okay? Now, some of you may not be able to have or get 10 parties right away, boom, boom, boom. But look, you get three, you get five, you hold those, you book two more. You get to a point where you've always got 10 appointments on your date book, and that's how you, you build that momentum. 30 days to build a momentum, 90 days to build a movement. So even if you know people are like, oh, I couldn't get 10, I got this, and then they don't even hold them. You own the skill of being able to get the bookings, even if it's three, and then coaching it, holding that appointment, getting the referrals, getting the bookings. We have taught you the skill, and your goal is to always have and to get there and get know what it feels like to finish that goal to where you've always got 10 on your date book. I, I loved that it was a month, it was September of last year. I think it was Trinity had 29 parties on her date book. You know why? She was finishing her car. I think it was year before last. She was finishing her car. She had a goal. And so that's once again, going back to knowing what you want and possessing, possessing it, and that having that desire and that will, and it all goes hand in hand, but you have to know what it is that you want, okay? So I'm gonna read some notes from, from my notes, um, the vision. So for as long as I can remember, we were always taught to do a goal poster, do a goal, do a goal poster, whatever. I'm going to throw that out the window. I'm gonna to talk to you something about big, something bigger and better than a goal poster, but hang on. Um, vision to reach your heart's desire by June 30th. You must have a vision that will get you out of bed, okay? So it's got to be something big. It's got to be a God-sized goal. Um, and it's got to be a God-sized goal because only God can, has to intervene and make it happen. And that's when you learn how to finish. You know, everybody's a starter, but not everybody's a finisher. So not having a goal poster. So what do you do? So I'm talking a vision with depth, okay? What the problem with goal posters is everybody starts listing all these things that they want. And what we know and what Mary Kay has taught us is a confused mind does nothing. So what you do is you find a one big God-sized goal. And if it's big enough, all those other little things that you wanted come they come because of the activity that you actually put in to reach that God-sized goal. For example, 
let's say I want to do half million, half million to get a half million bar pin. Well, if I reach that by June 30th, guess what comes with that? My pink Cadillac. Guess what else comes with that? Uh, quarter sharing, maybe quarter sales. All those things come from that. And so getting on stage at seminar. And so having that God size goal creates all those little ones that you don't have to worry about putting on a goal poster. You just put Mary Kay Carr or court of sales or director and you in the director suit. Everything else will come from that. If you put yourself in the director suit or you put yourself in the red jacket, team leader, whatever, having that goal that's bigger that you can't accomplish unless God intervenes. Okay. And so having that vision with depth, so I'm kind of a rebel. I know you're like, oh my God, no goal poster. So that's me. I'm a rebel. I know that all these years I could go back and get all my goal posters that I've ever created and I've missed every goal on there. Missed it. It was too many things. And so I'm telling you, when you just focus on one thing, that's when it all comes together. So if you're not hitting obstacles, you're not working hard enough. When you're working hard enough, you are going to come in, you're going to run into obstacles. You know, I don't know what they are. They could be anything. I could go, I can't even bring up any of my, my obstacles, but you do run into them. So when things are going smoothly, you're probably not reaching your goals. <laughs> um, so you're not working hard enough. And when you have um, confidence in yourself, you will attract the right people. Okay, when you have confidence in where you're going, what you're doing, you will attract the right people. Okay, I'm going to tell you in the very beginning of my business, I did have a, I had several naysayers and they were pretty big ones my father, my mother in law, and my one of my friends at church. But you know what? I was confident that my husband and I prayed about it. We, we knew how God had put Mary Kay in my path strategically at the right time within 24 hours. I didn't have to go around telling everybody my testimony about that. I just let those, those people, those naysayers, let them say what they wanted to say and I let it roll off my back. Why? I had confidence in my decision. I had confidence in what I wanted and I had confidence in what God had showed me because I had prayed about it. And, you know, I think, when you do all those things, well, I know when you do all those things, it doesn't matter what other people think. Um, so no challenge means uh, no change. Okay. And that's why booking 10 parties as fast as you can is going to bring change to your situation. It's going to bring change and it's going to create that the, the business and the success that you're looking for between now and June 30th, okay? You fine-tune so much when you master the skill of getting to 10 appointments on your date book. We don't talk about getting to 10 enough. We, you know, we just say, go get one, go get two. We watered it down in the last few years because of, of just people and the way people, the culture is right now. But you know what? Watering this business down is not helping people. It's not helping you to see this business for what it can do. It can support you. It can support your family. It can pay off your mortgage. Guys, my mortgage is almost paid off. And I've had my kids in, all, in, in their private schools, all because I did the work. Okay, so I'm not going to water down anymore and try to, I'm, I'm not going to worry about scaring people because the right people who can receive the message will receive it. Ten parties always on your date book is how you are going to get where you want to be because you don't have to work for someone else, okay? I don't want, I don't care about your insurance. You say, well, I've gotta work for somebody else to have insurance. No, in this business, you can pad it in to your desired monthly income, what you need to pay that extra insurance. There's lots of insurance out there for self-employed self people. And so stop telling yourself that lie of why you can't do Mary Kay full time. 
And let me just tell you, uh, full time is not 40 hours. It's not 60 hours. It's not 70 hours. Okay. And so whatever you've been telling yourself is wrong. You can support yourself. You can provide health care. You can pay off your mortgage. You can buy a, you know, this is a thriving business. And it all starts with always having consistently 10 appointments on your date book at all time. Um, so when you get to 10, when you learn that skill and you master that skill, it fine tunes everything else. This business has always been a skill based business. And once you own the skill, you're home free. It's like riding a bike. I may not be able to ride a bike. I mean, I can ride a bike. I'm not going to ever forget how to ride a bike because I learned how when I was a little kid. I bet you're the same way. I may not ride it every year or, you know, every day, but I can. You want to put this up there for Crystal? Crystal, that's on the board. She's a star. Her up here. Sorry, distractions. But I know how to ride a bike. I could get on and go again. Once you own that skill, it's the same way about this business of booking from the bookings and getting 10. And booking from, let's say you have snow bonnets. You have absolutely nothing on your books. You're going through your customer list. It's, you know, it's January, New Year, New Year makeovers. This is where you get all booked up. You own that skill and you're never ever going to forget it. So you fine tuned it once you went through that whole process of booking those 10. Um, it gets easier when you get to 10. Life gets so easy. And so once you get to 10 and you hold those appointments, you get two more from each appointment. And the next thing you know, like Trinity, she had, you know, 27 in one month. I'm not saying you got to hold 27 parties in a month, but it wouldn't it be nice to have your 27 parties spread out over January, February, and March, and then you've got more coming in and more coming in. This business wasn't meant for you to get stuck, okay? It's not meant for you to get stuck. I know we all get stuck. I've been stuck before. I had 17 cancellations in a row. I didn't quit, didn't tuck my tail and run. I just figured it out. Figured out what I was doing wrong, changed my words, changed your world. That's what I did. That's, that's all you got to do. If you're on a horse and it's dead, you get off. You go try, you go get on another horse. You try a new script. You get a new hostess plan. And so if your hostess plan right now is not going to bring you in 10 solid bookings, let's talk about changing it. Because think about what would you cook and clean and invite your friends over for. If you get excited about it, they'll get excited about it. That's what I always loved about this business because, gosh, for the first, oh, probably 15 years, I changed my hostess plan every January and every July. Guess what those dates are? January was our new physical year, our new year, um, and then July 1 was our new Mary Kay physical year. We get two do-overs in Mary Kay. And if I wasn't excited, I was kind of like ADHD. Uh, every six months I get bored with my hostess plan, I get a new one. Well, now we have all these great new products that launch every season. And that's my test panel. So I don't have to keep changing my hostess plan. My, my customers just host to, to be on the test panel. That's worked for me for the last five years. So we didn't always have a lot of new product launches in, you know, 10 years ago, but now we do. And it's changed my hostess plan, but you might need to revamp your hostess plan. If you're not excited about it, your, your get, your hostesses will not be excited and you won't get bookings. And so it's your baby. It's your baby. You can do whatever you want. And I would sit down and crunch the numbers. What was I willing to give away? for these 10 sharp women that I wanted on my date book, okay? Now let's talk about that. We've talked about that a lot in other Zooms that we've done. You don't call anybody that didn't buy product from you. She came to your party, she sat there, she already went to her and you did a facial. She only spent the gift certificate. Those are not the women that you are going to target. They have no money. Broke people hang out with broke people. Okay, stop giving them free stuff. Okay, look for the women that intimidate you. Look for the women that take care of themselves. And sometimes, because we're insecure and we're talking to a sharp woman, we may have to give away a little more. 
but that's okay because those kind of women are going to bring in quality women and it's a risk but you're going to get your money back from the sale from the sales from the leads that they provide you okay and from the bookings that you're going to get but stop calling those women that didn't buy product from you they weren't willing to you know they may have liked it but they weren't willing to buy it or they weren't willing to host a party to get it for free Linda Tupin national sales director always said you run from them okay they're not willing to work for anything go find those sharp professional women okay when you are getting ready to work on a goal or run with a big goal for six months, you know, for 90 days of power and then another 90 days. Find a fight song, find a power song, get your song and play it every day. Get yourself pumped up. Call the hotline, call the million dollar message and listen to those messages every day. You know, find, um, find, I wish we had those, we don't have CDs anymore. I wish they would get that media, uh, a uh, thing that you could download now so you can listen training tapes every day, but do something every single day that's going to keep you in the zone, in the zone and pumped up. You are in sales. You have to be high. You have to be on, you know, in a high to be able to get, to be able to, to book those people. You have to be excited. And if you get down, you got to be able to get yourself back up. The first person you lead when you become a leader is you. If you can't lead yourself out of a pit, you will not be able to lead other team members, okay? That is the first lesson in leadership. The first person you lead is you. All right, May, um, you can make this happen. So, uh, so every morning you listen to your power song, and you know what, you get mad. Get mad that you haven't reached your goal. If you have been in Mary Kay for a while, and you, you know it's another new year, and we're talking about 90 days of power again, and you haven't reached your goal, you didn't course correct, get mad at yourself. You can make this happen. It's time for change, and change can start now. What a, what a better time for change than now. Um, so I'm talking to myself too, because I start, qualifications for my car, uh, for my next new car, January 1, January to June 30th. And I'm just going to be honest with you. If one more person in a drive through says, oh, they don't make the Mary Kay cars pink anymore? <sighs> yes, they're pink. And I've even said, I'm a loser. I didn't sell enough to get a pink car. And they look at me <laughs> like, I've got to have a pink car again. And so I have to make sure that I that I can motivate you to get what you want so I get what I want. And that is a testimony of my leadership skills. And so that's why I'm always pouring in and pouring in and pouring in and trying to make you better um, and teaching what I'm teaching you what I know so that you get what you want. And if you get what you want, I get what I want. Um, and so it is up to us and I'm going to do this. I'm going to get back in my pink Cadillac this year because now it's seat seven again. And I want that seven seater Cadillac. Um, and if I can't teach you how to get what you want, guess what? I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. And I'll be the first to tell you that. Um, there is an art of starting. Okay. And this is a new start. This is an, an, your do over and you cannot finish what you do not start. Gosh, so many people have been in Mary Kay for several months and they do not consistently hold appointments. They do not consistently, excuse, excuse me, consistently have sales. And I, that blows my mind because that was the one thing I did. I held an appointment every single week for six months. And then for the next six months, I held two appointments every single week. It was my business. It was how I paid myself. Imagine if you have a job right now that you decide that you're not going to go into work. <laughs> you would be fired. And so I want to ask you, would you rehire yourself based on your last six months activity? Do an evaluation, an employee evaluation. Would you rehire yourself based on the activity and the results that you put in 
as an employee to yourself in the last six months? If you say no, then you get to change it right now. This is the art of a restart, okay? This is your restart. Um, if you keep having false starts, um, you're living in a delayed obedience. You need to get obedient to your business. You need to get obedient to yourself, have consistency, and see your business for what it is. You're not taking yourself seriously. You are being a ter terrible employee to yourself or you're being a terrible boss to yourself because you're not making yourself do the activity that you need to do in order to get the results that you need to get. Okay. Um, so you open, I want you to open your eyes and look at the field. Um, it's ripe for harvest. So I want you to think about your area. And if you are not in my area or you're not in the Warner Robins area, um, cause I know for a fact what the numbers, what I'm about to tell you, you actually should have a sales director for every bank branch in your town. That's how that's the square radius of number of people is the same formula of how many people the sales director quota, the same formula that the banks use for the square radius of people in that square radius. There are only two sales directors in Sharpsburg and there's only one sales director in Noonan and I don't even know that she's a sales director anymore. So in two cities, Sharpsburg and Noonan, there are two sales directors. We have over a million people and there's only two sales directors. There are a need for sales directors. Warner Robbins, and I think there's only one. Marion can correct me. And I think in Macon, I'm not even sure there's one in Macon. So you guys are looking at the same lack of leadership that we are in my town. So what does that say? The field is ripe for harvest. Go If you want to be a sales director, go be a sales director. You are needed. There are people, the, the, the people in the square radius. And here's another thing. Here's what's so great. I'm giving you just that formula but we are not tied down to our town. We have no territories, okay? So you don't have to stay in Noonan. Even if there were 10 sales directors in Noonan, you don't have to stay. The, it's ripe for harvest. So I wanna tell you, I wanna talk to you about having a sense of urgency and the cost of an opportunity. And this is a, this is this will just tell you if you don't seize the moment, the moment will pass you by. So you guys, some of you will remember this, uh, the uh, company Blockbuster. So Blockbuster peaked in 2004. They had over 60,000 employees. Um, they had 9,000 stores worldwide, and they had an annual revenue of 5.9 billion dollars. Then came the change. It was called it was called video streaming. Okay. Blockbuster ultimately filed bankruptcy, but it didn't have to happen. You know why? Because in 2000, they were offered to buy this new little company that was a DVD mailing service for $50 million. That was Blockbuster's three days of revenue. They could have bought Netflix for $50 million in 2000 for three days of their revenue, and they said no. They didn't see the change that was coming. They didn't see the opportunity in front of them. Well, we all know Blockbuster went out of business. <laughs> they didn't change with the times. And we all know how successful Netflix is now. I mean, when I read this book, it was $32.9 in revenue a year. And I think it's even doubled that now. The harvest, the fields are ripe for harvest. You set your goal. You find out what you well, you find out what you want, and you go for it. You have a burning desire for it. Um, don't waste your opportunity. Don't waste your opportunity right now for a new start, which is your January one, your restart. This is where the excitement starts. I've got a feeling that Mary Kay is going to launch something so big January one. They always do, and it's going to create just an excitement that will just help you guys to just rush forward all the way through to June 30th with just amazing momentum.
And so be ready. I'm giving you a few days notice and warning. I'll be very shocked if that doesn't happen. Um, here's, some, here's some more tips. We see only what we're looking for. If you're looking for excuses for not getting started and doing something big from January to to June, you will find excuses, okay? You'll find an excuse. But same is true for an opportunity. If you're looking for them, you'll find them, okay? Um, every dream has a price tag, but God-sized dreams is, is worth every penny, every second, every ounce of energy, I promise you. Um, so how much is your dream worth? Pay the price, I promise you, it's totally worth it. The bigger the dream, um, the greater the investment of time, talent, treasures it will take to accomplish it, okay? Um, God-sized dreams require more risk, more sacrifice, more faith. When God gives a vision, he makes provision. See, God already sees you at the finish line. All you have to do is do the work, okay? Now, I want to share a quick story. I'm going to try to remember this. and it, it's. It was a, a story about a, um, uh, oh my gosh, I can't think. His name was Cortez, and he was an um, explorer, and he set out on an expedition. And if you've heard this before, that means you've been in our area for a long time, and you need to be a sales director, because <laughs> I'm telling this story again, and you've heard it before. Um, so Cortez was an expedition. He set out on an expedition, and he he found people to join him. He found men to join him and, and uh, got them excited about the cause of capturing the, um, the, uh, okay, the Aztec treasure. The Aztec treasure had been held by this tribe in Mexico for over 400 years, and lots of expeditions had gone to try to take it back, but they would all die in vain. They, would, they could not steal the treasure back from the, the Mexicans and so, or from this Mexican tribe. And so Cortez gathered these men and got them excited, sold them on the dream, sold them on his vision, and they set sail. And they set sail for this island to take back this Aztec treasure. Along the way, the men started losing their vision. They started losing hope. They started kind of getting, you know, nay naysayers, negative Nellies. And so when they got off the boat and they got on shore, Cortez gathered all his men on the beach. And then he said something that changed everything. He said, go burn the boat. And they're like, how are we going to get home? He said, go burn the boat. Either we die or we take the treasure and we take their boats and go home. They burned their boats and they were able to win the war and take back the Aztec treasure. And they used their boat, the other, you know, the, the, um, the tribe's boats. And so is there something holding you back from reaching your goal? Because if Cortez had not done that, they would have all died right there on those shores because they, it was their mind. It was their mindset, the negative, the negative thoughts, the negative record that we play in our head. And so you've got to take yourself to the point of no return. That's how you reach a goal. Now, I'm a little bit past, but hang on for a second. You must, you must approach your new year with a level of commitment that will drive you forward. Safety nets and escape routes can protect us from pain and injury, but they also tend to reduce the effort, focus, and commitment we invest in our process. Once you make a choice, you have to be willing to burn your boat. Okay. All right. So guys, I really, really, really want to know what your goals are. You know, if you knew you could not fail, what would you want to finish on June 30th at midnight so that we will be able to celebrate you at seminar in Dallas, Texas on stage in front of 10,000 screaming women with your beautiful seminar gown on with your, with your, Queen's sash on? Will you be picking up the keys to your free car? Will you be recognized as a brand new sales director in your new director suit? Will you be on the court of sharing, picking up your diamond ring, or the court of sales, picking up your diamond ring? Court of sharing is a bumblebee, by the way. $1,200 value. What will you be doing? It's up to you. 
but you have to burn your boat right now so that you have the commitment and there's no turning back. All right. Any questions? Oh, there's a lot of chatter going on. Let me read. Let me stop the recording. Hang on. <laughs> 